Welcome to VBS. Hashtag BIS VBS. I'm Beth Davis. I'm saving a seat for Jenna Kizar. She's on her way. We're all gonna do this together. It's gonna be the best. This distance between this us. This distance between us is uh, it's it's too, too much. much. Jinx. 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 Is hey. that from something? Oh, hey, Jenna. Is that from a movie? I don't think I don't so. Know. We just, I was just telling them how I felt like they were very far away from me. All right, guys, what chapter are we on today? Four. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for the gift of joy and mm -hmm. laughter and friendship. Lord, we offer up um, today to you. We offer up this moment to you, God. I ask your Holy Spirit, Lord, to come down and to um, give us inspiration. Give us great peace and comfort. Lord, I ask that uh, you would enlighten our hearts, our ears, our eyes to what you're saying to us in your word. Thank you for the gift of these women watching, whether live or later. Thank you for moving in their lives in the way that you are. Give them great peace today, God. We say this all in your son's most holy and precious name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You go first. Jenna. Guys, I'm we're in chapter first. four. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of takeaways. Oh, here we go, Share your Grace. Takeaways. From verse five, he will manifest the motives of our hearts. Thanks for knowing my heart, God. Okay, Grace. That's that amazing. That was the sweetest thing ever. <laughs> Who will bring light, hey, bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Yeah, he will. Anna, did you have anything? I don't have my Bible. Okay, do you want to look yeah. at mine? or You can go first and I'll yeah. try to read it again. Okay, so um, my takeaway Thanks, Katie. is verse 12. Verse 12. Anyone else? Well, into 13, if I'm being honest with sure. you. Sure. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure, and when slandered, we speak kindly. Mm -hmm. Actually, if I could just zoom in, I think I think probably this is who I want to be. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Even in my circumstances, I want to be holy. I don't just want to be holy or kind or strong when my circumstances are happy and favorable, right? I, when I'm being like spoken negatively about, when I'm being criticized or slandered, I want to, I want to bless God. I want to mm. bless those people. Um, I want to bless even like my own work or words, whatever is being criticized, you know? I, I want to, to bless and not to second guess and become insecure. I want to bless. When I'm being persecuted, I want to endure. I want to get better at persevering mm -hmm. and enduring, you know, with joy, with trust. When slandered, speak kindly. Here we go. So I just, I just like that. Aspirational. It's good stuff. Those are aspirational goals. Yeah. Love that. How about you guys? Verse 20, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but power. I love that verse too. Matthew 20. Yeah. The kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. Yeah. Verse 10, we are wise in Christ. I would like to talk about that. Can we Let's have a little talk discussion about, about verse 20? Yeah. Anybody else raise your hand or send a heart maybe if you also were struck by, for the kingdom of God depends not on talk, but on power. I think, I think there's a lot to this. We could definitely go like signs and wonders route with it. Like, uh, a revelation of God's power in our lives. But I also wanna talk about like the power of our testimony, right? Mm. Um, there's power in our words. So it doesn't depend on our words, on our talk so much as on God's power at work in our lives. That's and cool. again, I just wanna experience more like what I'm hearing in, in my takeaway verse and in verse 20 is that there's more here. There's, mm. there's more being offered to us in the gospel and in relationship with Christ. And I, I want all of it. Yeah. I don't want to limp through life, right? I want power. I want blessing. I want endurance. 
I want kindness. I want to see more of that fleshed out in my everyday life. Yeah. I don't just want it to be like this thing, this nice thing. Like there are plenty mm. of people that like talk about faith, you know, but is the faith activated in their life? Is it making a difference? Is it changing them? 19, if the Lord is willing, a good reminder that everything happens according to his will. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I love that you just zoomed in on that. If the Lord wills. Amen. Yeah. P-Rod said verse 12 and 13 was her takeaway as well. It reminds me the way I respond and react to others. Yeah. Especially my family. Yeah. Verse four is a Lord who judges me. I liked that too. I'm not worried about what other people say, but just the Lord. Okay. Can I, can I take that? And can I, can I up you one? Yeah. Verse. I don't even judge myself. I don't even judge myself. How often I judge myself harshly and believe the lies that others speak about me. Truth yes. is only God can judge me. Yes. I do not even judge myself. That was I'm crazy. not spending all of my time thinking about everything that I did wrong, all the things I should have done. I'm not spending all of my time going over my sin, right? I'm not focusing on those things. I'm focusing on the Lord. He's my judge, so I'm gonna bring it to him. Yeah. But I'm not gonna judge myself. Verse 10, Jennifer, we are fools for the sake of Christ. I love this. Sometimes people just look at me like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love like that. that yeah uh, verse five judge nothing wait until the lord comes Ooh. therefore do not pronounce judgment before the time wow before the lord comes okay. who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart mm. katie said verse seven for who sees anything different in you what have you that you do not did not receive it if then you received it why do you boast as if it were not a gift i love this as well it made me just think like all is gift yeah there's nothing like everything is to be thanked and like filled with gratitude from us because everything is yeah a gift. double underlined totally do you boast as if it were not a gift totally do you know what one of my favorite verses to declare Ellis. in my life is it's in this chapter it's verse eight Let's hear it. Already you have all you want. Ooh. Whenever I feel like God is not coming through for me, like I, I'm, I'm jealous or I'm envious of someone else having something that I That's want, cool. right? I will declare already I have all that I want. Already wow. I have all that I want. Already I'm rich. And that's not even just about money. Totally. That, that's about other things. Like I have to preach to myself through the word with power, right? There's power in declaring the word. Um, already I have all that I want. The Lord mm. is taking care of me. Already I have all that I want. Yes. I verse one and verse 10, I want to be Christ's servant and an absolute fool for the Lord. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. Like we do need to be stewards of the yes. mystery, right? It can't, we have to kind of like, we're at the service of the mystery. It's not so a true. textbook. It's not a formula. It's not a plan. We're like ushering in the spirit and stewarding the mystery of who he is. I love Loved this, Sylvian, or maybe Bailey. Now it is, of course, required of stewards that the, stewards that they be found trustworthy. Mm -hmm. I loved that too. It's so important. What verse is that? That's the next verse, I think. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Yeah. Verse two. Were we to boast, everything we have is from God. We never want to treat others as if we are superior. Very popular saying in Good Hispanic stuff, culture is "Si Dios quiere." if God wills it. Verse eight, we can be content with where our lives are in times of consolation and forget that we are richer when we are poorer, to give praise when we are in consolation by remembering our reliance on him. Verse 16, Sally said, if we are imitators of Paul through words and deeds, we are also imitators of Christ. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I was just reading verse 16 and I'm like, that's so good. I hope we talk about that. I appeal to you then be imitators of me. Mm -hmm. And just above that, he's talking about how he's like a father yeah of the gospel like be imitators of him like preach the word give everything for jesus endure to the end love a as a, a spiritual father or mother mm -hmm. i loved that Lindsay said verse four it's the lord who judges me i need to not worry what others think and stop being my hardest critic yes the lord wants that for you too yeah verse 17 just mm -hmm. beloved and faithful child a beautiful and simple reminder mm -hmm. that's beautiful mm-hmm um, Katie said verse 21 spirit of gentleness is great too friend. I literally have yeah. double exclamation points What would you prefer might it come to you with a stick? 
<laughs> or, or with, with love, love in, in a spirit, spirit of, of gentleness. gentleness. Yeah, gentleness, please. My, I can't take it. I can't take this stick. This whole, it is, so the, I mean, this section, fatherly admonition. This is such a father, you know? We have to live as Christ's servants, not just by speech, but actions. We have to be trustworthy, verses one and mm -hmm, two. Mm -hmm. Everything is gift, so good. Verse seven, Jennifer said, is a reminder to me that all that I have and all that I am is because of Christ that all the graces and gifts of the spirit are not by my hand, but by the hand of God yeah. to stay humble. You guys are amazing. There's something on, there's something here about, about the gift. I think Katie said, yeah, I'll pass on the stick. <laughs> <laughs> um, verse 21 is a reminder to me to do everything in a loving manner. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. I'm just thinking about myself, how I don't want a stick, but yeah, I could bring the stick. Definitely. Okay, verse six, Sid said that none of you be puffed up in favor of one against another. It really speaks to me in reflecting on what role I'm playing in the present divisiveness in our country today. Mm, well, that's amazing. Father Parks who, isn't it Father Parks who talks Tell about me. how it's easy to read like about the Pharisees and to um, relate them to other people, right? We're, we're always looking at the Pharisees and judging them. It's harder to look at the Pharisees and to see ourselves. And so I love that you are receiving this, personalizing this yeah. as like fatherly admonition from the Lord. Like you're applying the word to your own life and saying, does do my actions, do my words align with what St. Paul is talking about here? Yeah. Not like what's everybody else doing out totally. here, but What's my response? How do I live yeah. as a disciple? Yeah. Verse 15, I became your father through the gospel. I love that too, because it just speaks to the reality, the depth of relationship that's uh, that's in the family of God. Verse 21 reminded me of my role as a stepmommy. I choose to mother my darling with love and a gentle spirit. The rod though. Yeah, in the in the Ignatius Study Bible, yeah. it says um, on the rod one, because mm. in this translation it says rod. A stern pastoral warning, pastoral warning for yeah. the troublemakers in Corinth. Ideally, Paul hopes to avoid an unpleasant confrontation when he arrives. He's saying like, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the community. So do you want me to come with a stick? He's saying, get your act together. Get it together, because guys. Because I'm coming back. <laughs> Thanks for That's that. That's terrifying. Ignatius. It's terrifying. Paul's relation to the Corinthians is paternal, having brought them new life through the gospel. His spiritual fatherhood extends to others as well, such as Titus, One Semus, Onesimus, 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 um, and Timothy. There was a close connection between paternity and priesthood in the ancient Near East. Cool. In the patriarchal age, fathers and firstborn sons exercised the cultic ministry of building altars and offering sacrifices for their family. Wow. In the Mosaic age, God elevated Aaron and his Levitical sons to be the fathers and priests of the tribal family of Israel. The same principle carries over on a spiritual level in the age of the new covenant, where Christ, our great high priest, ordains men to the ministry of spiritual fatherhood wow. for the priestly service of the gospel. Vatican Council II, Vatican II reaffirmed this connection when it stated that priests are preeminently the fathers and teachers of God's people. That's awesome. I love seeing like evidence of church teaching in scripture. It's yeah. like one of my favorite things. Yeah. So that's really rad. I just was wondering if you guys were liking First Corinthians. I love it. Do you guys like it? I'm like getting jazzed about it every Verse day. 16 reminds us that Christian leaders need to not only teach the gospel, but teach how it works in daily life and conduct. Verse nine just spoke out to me. We are in a spiritual battle as apostles for the Lord. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, as though sentenced to death because we've become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to mortals. Paul. Every VBS book is my favorite. I mean, we love doing it with you guys. Yeah, even if it's not our favorite, it's all right. The Lord's doing some work. Well, and I think what's so cool, what what's special about VBS is that you could not resonate with it that day. And then you come totally. here and you hear how it spoke to someone else and you're like, oh, I missed that. Or I didn't understand it that way. And now there's a deeper appreciation and more openness and maybe something to pray about. Jennifer Joy said, I do love it. I'm underlining a lot, making a mess of my Bible. I love that. That's why we're doing I'm it. I'm into that. You know what's so cool is I've underlined things and then like a long time later, I'll come back to it and it will like speak to me. that underlined thing that I underlined months ago yeah. or even years ago yeah will speak to me and has formed me for that moment yeah so it's eternal the word is has eternal consequences on us living and active yep 
glad we're doing this. I read the chapter twice and came up empty. But wow, I've gotten so much today. Oh, good. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This is every weekday. Uh, verse 14, Paul doesn't want to make them ashamed, but loves them as beloved children. What is it? Isn't that it? interesting? Yeah. Well, he's calling them out on some things, right? So then he's saying, I'm not writing this to shame you. I I'm writing this because I'm your dad. And because I love you, I want to say that this is not good. This is not healthy. I don't want you to continue on in this way, believing these things. Because I'm your father, I want to correct you. Yeah. So his discipline is really out of a, a fatherly heart. He's not saying it because they're bad people, because they're sinners, and he's disappointed in them. He's saying it because he loves them. Yeah. I also loved what you loved, Beth. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 and yeah. 13. Yeah. I just don't like this version. Can I see yours? You can. Yeah, I'm, I'm even second guessing. I committed Are you? too soon. Oh yeah, my goodness. Yeah, I committed Beth. too soon on that. That wouldn't have been my takeaway, I don't think. Oh Lord. Yeah. I just love, I mean, I love the idea of enduring and always like blessing and speaking kindly about people. And I think that that can happen right now in division in the church, yeah. division in our personal family and friendships, like to always come back to blessing and speaking kindly to people, no matter if they are totally on a different book than us not even different page different book or it seems to be like a different book yeah um our job and our call is always to bless them and to speak kindly mm. um and if we're slandered we always just come back to our call as christians to be like jesus and to continue to be generous with our hearts and our love to people yeah i think it's like very practical for right now Mm -hmm. Do you have a new one you want to say? Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I think even I <laughs> have a tendency, you know, like I can over spiritualize something. You're right. It's just like so practical. Yeah. When this, then this. Totally. Like I'm making it easy. Here's what to actually do. And it's like essential for our own spiritual health. It's not just like to be nice to someone else and mm -hmm. like for their lives to be better. It's for us to not sit in anger and irritation yeah. and like that's yucky that makes it all yucky and gu gunky inside yeah you know i literally used the word i was i cannot believe you just used that word gunky i, well, I had the well this never morning heard about and i used this word i was like it's like gucks it up like guck, gunk like i was trying to think of what the word was yeah, what is it is i it don't know gunky? i said i said guck <laughs> Instead of yuck, I guess. I don't know. I just think it's very funny. It is gucky in there. This is like, that's weird. I just tried to use that word and also and not to say out what not to say that the Lord is not like very much in pain with us if we yeah. are when we are slandered, when we're treated poorly. Yeah. Like he is right there with us. Um, but that our posture is, is always to give it to him, say like, Lord, where are you in this? Be here with me. Yeah. Um, and then to speak kindly from there. From the heart, not just like platitudes. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, it, it reminds me really of um, Father Jacques Philippe's book, Searching for and Maintaining Peace. How really, we have to we have to battle to keep our mm. interior peace, right? Yes. And so these practical tips are really like, okay, when this comes and it wants to steal your peace, then you do this in order to keep your peace, yes. you know? To me, these are tips for prioritizing and maintaining that interior peace. Searching oh. for and maintaining peace. Yeah, searching for it. <laughs> Maintaining it. Those are two. It's a very small book for a very big job. <laughs> but I love, I love that you said that. It's not only about what the other per, how to treat the other person. It's yeah. about what is happening totally. in our souls. Yes. Yeah. Yes, for sure. That's good. All right. What else you guys got? Corinthians is making the Bible so relatable. We are going through so many similarities that the community of Corinth has gone through. Totally. We are not so removed from the Bible. This is why I wanted to do first Corinthians. There we go. It, it's all about division. It's all about people getting off track. It's all about people misinterpreting scripture or mm. misinterpreting the gospel. Right? So then Paul comes in, clean things up. Cleaning it up. Uh, Laura said, it seems to me it's a good picture of God's mercy and justice. He offers mercy over and over, but justice has to come if mercy isn't received. I love the opportunity to read another book because I've not been a Bible reader. We're here to help. Proenza, I am with you, my friend. It surely is living and active. It's a double-edged sword that separates the love and hate in our hearts. Mm. Wow. That's beautiful. I love VBS. Me too. Verse 14. If we are trying to help or guide other sisters in Christ, we should always determine if we are doing it out of love, in love, or out of a place to puff ourselves up. Oh, man. Wow. Good stuff. That's really good. Mm -hmm. We need more of these Bible studies. We're doing it. Let's keep it going. Okay. 
We're doing it, right? I've now. never done anything like this before, so I'm learning a wonderful environment here. I'm so glad. Friend. So glad you're here. Thanks yeah. for doing this with us. Verse four, it's the Lord who judges me. It reminds me of how beautiful the sacrament of reconciliation is and how consistently going and receive, receiving Jesus' love and mercy helps me to continue to repent. Can I just say something about that? I think when we go to confession, yeah. which is so beautiful, and mm -hmm. I totally agree with you, it just helps. I know Beth has said this a lot of times. It just helps to like fine tune us to continue to be open to grace, to continue to repent, yep. like to continue to be purified. Yeah. Um, we need grace in order to even like have repentant hearts. And so that grace keeps on like pouring out, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation at confession, that grace to cons consistently like see our sin to authentically repent. Hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I love that you're receiving love and mercy, which helps to continue to repent. Like yeah. you continue to want to be purified and like Jesus, well, not in a scrupulous way, yeah. but in a way out of like deep love for oh, him. Okay. Here on a practical level, yeah. when you've been away from the sacrament of confession for a year yeah, and you're getting ready, you're examining your conscience, you can see the big failings. You're like, yeah. Ooh, that I really yes. got off track here. That yes. was not good. Right. Mm -hmm. But otherwise you're like, yeah, I got to get these like. Yeah. big things, main things out yeah. of the way. When you're going to confession once a month, every other week, once a week, if God calls you to that, you begin to fine tune your spirit because you don't want to sin. It, again, not the out of scrupulosity. The Lord is fine tuning your, yeah, your spirit. Yeah. You become more sensitive. Yes. You don't want to hurt God's heart. Yes. You don't want to break his heart. You don't want to damage your relationship. You don't want anything to get in between you and the Lord. No guck. So no gunk. <laughs> gunk, guck. We'll take a poll. <laughs> you don't want anything getting in there and messing up your ability to hear God's voice or follow his will. Because what sin does, it hardens us. We can't hear, we can't respond to the often very subtle promptings of the Holy Spirit. So I'm a huge proponent of regular confession because it keeps us sensitive. It's not because I'm a horrible sinner, right? I, I love that Paul says that. I'm not aware of anything against myself. <laughs> like it's, it's not about focusing on the sin. It's about focusing on the relationship and hearing God clearly and regularly. Totally. And and not as not an audible hearing, like a, a movement, right? An insight. I was just sharing with Jenna earlier this week when we had dinner, there have been a couple of things that I'm like in a situation and I'll hear someone say something and it like resonates with my spirit. And I'm like, I know the Lord's asking me to do that mm. or inviting me to this thing. And that's kind of crazy. Now I'm gonna try to let that go. And then it comes up again, right? That's being that's being sensitive to the promptings or the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. It's not like we walk around with a voice in our head, totally. right? We we sometimes hear God in our hearts. I don't have many experiences of audibly, I don't know if I have any audible experiences. I've never heard God's voice, but I've known God was speaking in my soul. Those are different. So I'm, I'm talking yes. about hearing God in terms of his promptings. You guys, yes, what Beth said, you don't wanna hurt God's heart. This is it. Thank you two so much. GB, remind me what your name is, GB. JP2 went to confession every day just to receive grace. I had a priest tell me once I don't need to have sin to come into the sacrament of reconciliation and receive grace. Oh. Interesting, I've never heard that. Me neither. Okay, the other thing I really liked, well, speaking can of I, this. Can I just, if, yeah. again, if, you have, if, you, if you're going regularly to confession, yeah. you're going to start to be disturbed by what you think are little sins. Mm -hmm. You be not because you're being scrupulous, but because you love the Lord yes. and you want to be holy. So that little instance of gossip, that little white lie, what I don't know what your little thing is that you're like, oh I kind of overate on that thing, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, well that's not a big deal, right? You're gonna become so sensitive because you want to keep your relationship free of any totally stuff right? You want to be able to hear God. So going to regular confession, you're not, sorry to say, really, unless you're, I don't know, JP2, what? you're not going to run out of sins for confession. You're not. Because, oh, I see. You're talking about what the priest said. Because about I'm saying the Lord will continue, he'll reveal deeper things. Like he's dealing with me about things now that I've been doing my entire life 
and I didn't think were a big deal. But now I'm to the place he's calling me to the next level. He's calling me to mature in holiness and that thing just doesn't jive, right? But that thing was not the thing 20 years ago to work on. So he's so patient and he allow, allows us to continue even in our venial sins, even in these little petty ways, because he will eventually purify us and call us to deeper holiness. Even in like entertaining of thoughts, you know, thoughts can come in, we start entertaining it. He still loves us, holy, Yeah. always. But I can be purified of that. There's always more with the Lord. So it's not like if you get these big sins out of the way, suddenly you're in the clear. You're gonna realize like, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. that's why I love verse five. He will bring light to the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Yeah. Then every man, I don't know what the, I don't know what commendation is. Every man will receive his commendation from God. Commendation is like a- Dictionary? Hey, it's like how somebody like a commendation is in the military okay. their orders their level okay. i don't know somebody google that for us anyway i just like this that like everything that's in the darkness little things that seem really petty and yeah silly yeah they're all just coming out into the light mm -hmm. um as sarah erickson said two days ago in her instagram caption which i love he's turning all the lights on yep in our hearts and yeah. disclosing the purposes of our heart. That's it. He gets down in the motivation. Yeah. He gets down so deep. He wants to purify every single aspect of us because he wants us to be like Christ. He wants us yeah. to be perfect. <laughs> Jesus said, be perfect therefore as your heavenly father is perfect, which means it is possible. But that means getting down into the deep, deep stuff. Again, not necessarily big stuff, but little things like motivation. Yeah. Like our words, like our thoughts, like how we spend our time, like how we use our money, like our sexuality. He wants to get in all of it, mm -hmm. all of it, all of it. And that's not like, wow, that's a drag. It just like gets more beautiful. Oh, it's so exciting. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. It's not Because it does, work. I'm like, really want to get in my sexuality and yeah. money and ugh. But it's he's not, not there work. yet with me. I'm just baby stepping. It's not work. It's all joy, really. When the Lord brings stuff up to me, I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. I did not know why I did that. And now I understand it. Thank you. I don't want to do that anymore. It's so beautiful and fatherly. Um, can you confess something that you have confessed years ago, but are thinking about often? I mean, if you have a question, I recently brought to my spiritual director something and said, I think I have confessed this. It was so many years ago. It's coming up again. I'm unclear if the enemy is just like digging at me or if maybe I didn't confess it right. I don't. And some of that I think was spiritual warfare. So I just brought it to the priest and said, what do I do? Do I confess mm -hmm. it again? That's a good idea. Do you want me to be more specific in confession? He ended up just being like, that's the enemy. Did we do a whole, we have a whole Teachable Tuesday Q&A on confession, I think. Ooh. You can find it on our YouTube channel. I think one yeah. of our Q&As is about confession. Yeah. So. Go to the catechism too. The catechism is. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Anyone from New Jersey, come over and join us in the BIS New Jersey group. We talk about these BIS VBS takeaways together daily. Guys. You're amazing. I love that. Yeah. How cool. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for hosting that. Um. Okay, we love you guys. We're going to do a whole blog post on spiritual direction there is one i oh, there asked is one. about it there is one about spiritual direction you go to blessushi.net and yep. type in spiritual direction and then i'll clean my glasses for you guys next time okay, okay. just for you tomorrow that'll be your treat clean glasses love you guys chapter five bye tomorrow bye hi guys jenna gizar here i just want to say thank you so much coming over to our YouTube channel, hitting that subscribe button, liking this video so we can continue to create content that brings you life and happiness and laughter and gives God all the glory. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye.